And uh, let's get to the, the, the big elephant in the room, and that would be Bernie Sanders, because, uh, I mean, as far as I can tell, he's, he's going to run for president. Um, I think that you would think that from what he has seen from 2016, where if there was maybe a 5% chance, if he was disgusted enough that they haven't heeded the warning and they haven't um, moved, to, moved to his side, uh, he has his answer, I would think. Now, on the grassroots level, they, they are obviously following uh, the Bernie model and Bernie's policies. But as far as the politicians that he has bent over to work with, like Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic Party, uh, I mean, same old, same old. Nancy Pelosi, under the guise of pretend, trying to appear progressive, she's proposing that they, they put a blanket 80%. Uh, yeah. They will not raise taxes on 80% of people, which is really a thinly veiled, we can't pass Medicare for all and other policies that you might have to see minimal tax increases to actually save money uh, overall. So uh, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, not that you have Bernie on speed dial, but uh, do you think it's kind of a, not, you know, just a, by default, he's going to run as a Democrat if he runs, or you think I there's do. a chance? Okay. I, I do think that he will run as a Democrat uh, in 2020. I, uh, I hope that he runs as an independent. I would love to see that. I think he would win. Uh, and I think he would it not just would he win, but he would revolutionize politics in the U.S. Uh, by finally breaking out of the two party system. Um, uh, I, I don't think he will, though. And I think that what we're going to see when he runs in 2020 is that he uh, we're going to see the same thing. It's going to be a repetition of 2016, essentially, uh, in that he's going to get shot down by the party in 20 in, when he ran in 2016. He caught the party off guard in a number of ways, you know, and that is why he was able to get as far as he did. This time, the party has actually laid greater preparations uh, to, to, to block him. These are things like they're, they're going after caucuses. They're trying to eliminate caucuses. Bernie got half of his state wins from caucuses, you know, and they're saying, all right, let's just get rid of them. Uh -huh. And they're also they've kept things like the joint fundraising agreements that Hillary Clinton used to basically, you know, subjugate the DNC. Meaning, that, is, uh, uh, that, that by by the by way, let's just call it what it is: money laundering schemes. Yeah, that's what political called it. That's what Donna Brazil called it. It was money laundering, mm -hmm. and so that's allowed. You know, the, the 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 party is still allowed, and who in their right mind thinks it won't do this to contract with a candidate and say we're basically at your disposal. Mm -hmm. You know, they also gave themselves this incredible new power uh, to outright block a progressive candidate from running or any candidate from running if the DNC chair uh, decides that they haven't been sufficiently, quote, faithful to the party in their writing and their speaking and their actions over their career. You know, so like, who, do, who is that dedicated to? You know, that's like a kill switch for like Bernie, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, and that's the kind of, and, and who thinks that, that they wouldn't do that, that the party wouldn't do that, prevent him from running if the donors demanded it of them? You know, I think it's more likely that they wouldn't do that, that instead they'll run people like Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris and just try to kind of split the vote and have Biden or someone like that run away with it. I think Biden is their favorite, you know, and then Biden picks up Elizabeth Warren for VP or Kamala Harris for VP, you know, and that's the ticket that, that goes in. Um, so I think that's more likely to happen. And, and I think what is going to happen, too, is, you know, when Bernie gets shot down again, w once you can say is an anomaly, twice starts to become a pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, all right, it happened in 2016 and it, we just hit replay on 2020. And so I think there's going to be an identity crisis on the left in the progressive movement. And there should be uh, about how is it that we make progress. We have the majority of Americans on our side. Poll after poll shows it. People are desperate. People live more precarious lives than ever before, never recovered from the Great Recession. And yet we, you know, we've kind of hit this wall inside this political institution of the Democratic Party. And maybe it's time that we listen to the, the, the large majority of Americans, almost two thirds, that are calling for a new party instead. Maybe that's the way to revolutionize the country. And uh, lastly, I mean, obviously, you're not in his head, but as an astute political mind like yourself, you know, Bernie's not a stupid guy. He's been around and he, he, he knows every rule you're talking about. He knows that they're, it's like, a, it's like in sports, you know, if you've never faced an opponent, 
they they then are more familiar with you and they plan uh, before your next uh, match. Uh, so he knows uh, all these things are going to be happening. I think he also knows that uh, the media is going to be 10 times. I mean, we're already seeing it between The Washington Post, Politico, The New York Times. It's like every other day is another hit piece on Bernie. Uh, a New York Times just came out saying that he is really actually receding and uh, he's 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 beginning to lose uh, you know momentum because all these other progressives are getting elected, which makes zero sense. It's the opposite, obviously. So I wanted to ask you, like, if this if he if he knows all this, is it consultants telling him you you know run as a Democrat? Is it he just has been around D.C. too much and he doesn't want to burn down the village or he's not ready to burn down the village? What do you think is going into his process? I think his, his I, I think he genuinely believes that you know he can take over the Democratic Party. Now I think he's conflicted about that. You know I I, I don't think it's like a hundred percent. You know that's all he's ever believed. That's definitely not true. He's been independent his whole life. He actually wanted to run independent uh, in twenty sixteen, uh, and he was talked out of it uh, by by consultants. And so and, and so I. You know, I'm hoping that after uh, a- after this experience again in 2020, uh, that that Bernie does realize uh, what what he believed all of his life, essentially, uh, and that is that the progress has to be made outside of the two parties. When you know, when he was saying that uh, throughout the 90s uh, and the 80s and the 70s, um, the, the, there was actually a much more substantial difference between the two parties, obviously. You know, the Democratic Party had not undergone its new Democrats kind of ultra corporate revolution. Uh, and and so there's all the more reason, uh, you know, now to to recognize that what we need is is an independent alternative. How do, how do people find out more about, about the movement for the People's Party? Uh, come visit us at foratpeoplesparty.org. Uh, that is our website. And uh, come volunteer. Uh, you know, we would love uh, contribution as well. And, uh, and we're building chapters and field teams across the country. So we'd love to introduce you to the people in your area. Great, man. Appreciate you taking the time. And uh, we'll see each other soon. Yeah, look forward to it, Jordan. Take okay. care. You too.